shit. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you end WrestleMania Night 1. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Nash here. Welcome back to the channel. I just, holy shit. I don't even have the words to describe what we just saw. Tonight, I'm going to be giving you guys the result of night one of WrestleMania 30A, which is said to, be, to have been the most stupendous WrestleMania of all time. And I'm going to be honest, night one lived up to the hype. Lived up to the fucking hype. I don't even have the words to describe it as I'm going back on, on YouTube on my phone here. On, not on my phone. On my fire stick here. But holy shit. I, I just don't have the words to... I don't even know. I don't know. I'm just... I'm just at a loss of words. So we kick things off with the Usos defending the SmackDown tag team titles against Rick Boogs and Shinsuke Nakamura in a rivalry that's actually that funny enough for, for Shinsuke Nakamura dates back to last year, funny enough. But but the Usos told Boogs and Nakamura that if Boogs can defeat Jey Uso last month, they would get their shot at the SmackDown tag team titles. Boogs ended up defeating Jey Uso, and it led to this match. Um, I, the match didn't almost, I, I, in my opinion, the match sort of, sort of lived up, lived up to the hype. Um, but if I'm gonna be completely honest, um, with what happened to Boogs during the match, it was so heartbreaking. Boogs had both Usos on over his shoulders, and unfortunately his right knee gave out, and we found out that Boogs had suffered a quadricep patella injury, which is a very, which is kind of similar to how Triple H suffered, both in two, 2001 and 2007. Um... So Boogs will indeed be needing surgery. So Nakamura will be going will be going at it alone, which is unfortunate. Um, but you know, but shout outs to Boogs, shout outs to him. Um, speedy, 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 speedy. Yeah, can't can't even speak. Um, speedy recovery, man. Speedy recovery. But at the end, the Usos hit. Shinsuke Nakamura with the 1D paying homage to the Dudleys to retain the SmackDown Tag Team titles. <clears throat> we then move on to a match that was based on... That was just personal. As personal as it can get. As Drew McIntyre went one-on-one -on -one with Happy Corbin alongside Mad Cat Moss. And it was... Uh, one for the one that none of us will ever forget. I'm 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 gonna be honest. I thought that this would be the squash match because of the fact that nobody wants to see Baron Corbin versus Drew McIntyre. We've had that match several times before. Nobody wants to see it again. But truth be told, this matchup ended up living living up to the hype. The closing moments of the match, McIntyre hit Corbett with a future shock DDT, allowing him to hit hit Corbett with a claymore, and thus. Happy Corbin is no longer undefeated as Drew McIntyre defeated Corbin, which was insane. But what happened next was just as. It was just as. Madcap Moss was going to en enter the ring. McIntyre had his sword up towards Madcap Moss, struck Moss. Moss ended up le ended up jumping off the apron, and Drew McIntyre cut not one but two ring ropes, the top rope and the middle rope, which was insane. I don't know how to describe it. It was just nuts. But big shout out to Drew McIntyre. Congrats, congrats on the much needed victory. Now he can move on. He, he can then he can now move on to bigger and better things on SmackDown. 
like possibly going after a championship. Who knows? But next up, we have a match based on respect, literally, as the Mysterios, Ray, and his son Dom did battle with the Miz and social media icon Logan Paul. And I want to show you guys a photo from Logan Paul's Instagram. And it was one that actually caught my eye. And if you guys watched WrestleMania Night 1, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. But for those who don't, I want to show, show you guys, this is off of Logan Paul's Instagram. Notice this card right right here. Notice this card right here. It is a, um, it's a PSA 10 uh, uh, Pikachu Hollow, which was said to have been one of the most expensive... Um, it's actually a Pikachu Illustrator, actually. Um, and um, it's actually said to have been one of the most expensive, one of the most expensive po uh, uh, Pokemon cards in existence. And it lived up to the hype. I don't even have the words to describe it, but... Uh, but apparently it's pretty expensive. In fact, some people say that it's a lot more expensive than a um, than a uh, than a base a, a shuttleless base at Charizard. I, I believe I'm not. I, I don't know. But this was a really in interesting match. I thought Lo Logan Paul was just gonna like w w was just gonna choke. But I gotta admit, I gotta admit, he did pretty well. And this was a back and forth matchup, I will admit. But at the closing moments of the match, Miz and Logan Paul defeated the Mysterios as the when Miz hit hit the Skull Crusher finale on Rey Mysterio. And as they were celebrating, the Miz turns to Logan Paul and hit him with a Skull Crusher finale as well. And Miz ended up walking out of WrestleMania, which I'm not surprised on it. You know, Miz will always be Miz. Let's just be real on that. So, but, again, again, congrats to Miz and Logan Paul. This was actually Dominic Mysterio's first, first, re first WrestleMania. And you guys know, when it comes to a showing up to your first WrestleMania, you usually end up choking. Like, choking really quickly. Um, so... Yeah, it it was, but it, it it was pretty insane. But that was that was awesome. But speaking of awesome, I swear, and that was and uh, no pun intended with that last one, honestly. But this one was the most anticipated match in WWE history. Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, the Raw Women's Title, a rematch from SummerSlam last August, and. This was interesting because, um, um, if you, if you think about it, sorry guys, I'm, sorry, sorry guys, I'm on, I'm on my Instagram right now. I was checking something out. I, I was ch I was checking something out. Anyway, this was a mat. Th this rivalry dated all the way back to SummerSlam, when Becky Lynch became a last last minute um, addition to the match between you know you know you know involving Bel Air for the then SmackDown Women's Title. Sasha Banks had 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 suffered uh, had suffered through COVID, and she ended up not competing. Carmella ended up getting involved. Becky Lynch got, got involved as well, attacked Carmella. Becky Lynch ended up becoming SmackDown Women's Champion. Because of the draft, Charlotte Flair and, Bianca and Becky Lynch had to swap championships. So then, Becky Lynch ended up becoming the Raw Women's Champion. A title that she held for... for she says that she's held held for three years, but still. And this match was in... Saying, I don't know how to describe. Words can't describe how insane this this match was, but this lived up to the hype. It was just as hyped as as it can get. 
and the closing moments of the match, Bianca Belair, with what little, with what little energy she had in her, hit Becky Lynch with the KOD and pinned her to win the Raw Women's title. Thus, history has repeated itself. Bianca Belair going 2-0, and <clears throat> going 2-0 and at WrestleMania, which was awesome. I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know. This, she, she, she earned it. Let's be real. She earned the SmackDown. She earned the Raw Women's House. She earned it 100%. So, shout-outs to, to Bianca Belair. I know she's going to defend that title the same way she defended the SmackDown Women's title with honor and with respect because she loves this business just as much as we all do. Next up. Next up. I don't even know how the fuck to describe this. But we have Seth freaking Rollins in a match. We didn't know who it was until we heard that song. I think it was called My Kingdom. The American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, after six years, six years, came back to WWE. And it's and what's even more ironic, ATT Stadium was the last time we saw Cody Rhodes, or Stardust, if you will, at WrestleMania. Think about that. He had battled for the Intercontinental title, which was, in a, which was a ladder match. Six years later, in the exact same building, he goes up against Seth freaking Rollins. This was probably by far one of the best matches of the whole card. Of the whole card for night one. I would say this would this lasted about what 20 minutes I believe and the closing moments of the match Cody Rhodes hit Seth freaking Rollins with not only with not only a bionic elbow paying homage to his father the late great Dusty Rhodes but it took not one not two not three not four but about five crossroads to pin Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes is back in WWE. I don't know what he has planned for Monday Night Raw or Friday Night SmackDown, depending on what brand he goes to. But this is incredible. And I know, and somebody on on Instagram, I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna get, give a shout out to him. Um, uh, Kinshasa Wrestling, big shouts to him. Uh, no copyrights, of course. Uh, he he buys like a bunch of like title belts and whatnot, but um. But him and so many others on social media kept saying, "Oh, oh, this, oh, this doesn't feel right. He should stay over, you know, he uh, in AEW." The thing is that from the from the reports that I had read, and I believe I talked about these reports on the channel before. The reports said that Cody Rhodes' contract with AEW was done. He was done. He was not going to re-sign. He wanted to move on to bigger and better things. And he ended up coming back to WWE. What, what, A, what AEW lost, WWE gained. Because Cody Rhodes filed from the rumors that I had heard. Again, big shout out. No copyrights. You guys know how this works with the algorithm. But apparently Cody Rhodes had filed for... Uh, for WWE to use, uh, to allow Rhodes to use his theme song, My Kingdom, which was used in TNA, Ring of Honor, and AEW, which is awesome. Which is awesome. I just can't, can't believe that the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, is back at WWE. Holy shit. The only thing that I'm hoping for is that they don't put him back into the Stardust character. If they do that, I'm pretty sure... He may end up leaving WWE again. I'm pretty sure of it, but I, I I I don't think so. But this match absolutely insane. We then move on to a match that was that dates all the way back to Survivor Series 2018. If you guys remember me calling that card 
here, here on the channel, that you know which match I am talking about. <clears throat> but for those who do not know, and are new to the channel, and did not watch that result video, I recommend you guys watch it. It's like bur it's buried somewhere in, 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 in the pile of over 1,000 videos, videos I've done in six years. <laughs> um, I am talking about Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey for for this time, this time for the SmackDown Women's title. This rivalry dates all the way back to Survivor Series 2018. Originally, it was supposed to have been Raw Women's Champion Ronda Rousey versus SmackDown Women's Champion Becky Lynch. But because that Be Becky Lynch had suffered a broken nose and a concussion, she could not compete. So she chose Charlotte Flair to face Ronda Rousey at Survivor Series, which ended in a disqualification because Charlotte Flair used a kendo stick to attack Ronda Rousey and a steel chair to break her neck, sort of, I guess, I don't know. But that's what got the fans to boo her. That's what turned Ronda Rousey heel. And, or, 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 or I guess rather, I guess rather, rather that was the start of Ronda Rousey turning heel. Her last match, her last WrestleMania match was at MetLife Stadium, WrestleMania 35, Becky Lynch, Raw Women's Champion Ronda Rousey, SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte Flair, winner take all, the first ever WrestleMania match for women. Excuse me. Absolutely insane. And Becky Lynch ended up becoming Becky Two Belts. She lost the SmackDown Women's Champion to Charlotte Flair. And she kept she ended up keeping the Raw Women's title. You guys know you guys know Becky Lynch ended up having to give up the Raw Women's title because of her pregnancy. And we never saw Ronda Rousey again. Or so we thought. Three years later, Royal Rumble this past January, she returns and wins the Royal Rumble and challenges Flair for the SmackDown Women's title tonight. I'm going to be honest, this was a very intriguing rivalry because this was based on legacy and respect. This was probably by far the most bullshit match I had ever seen. And the way the match ended was bullshit because... Because Ronda Rousey had Charlotte Flair beat. Had her in the arm bar. She tapped out. But prior to that, Charlotte Flair accidentally hit the referee with a spear. That gave that gave Ronda the, the chance to apply the arm bar. Charlotte Flair tapped out. No, no referee. Ronda tries to bring, you know, tries to get the referee to come to. Flair hits Rousey with the with the wicked boot to the face. And she retains the SmackDown Women's title. I can guarantee you right now, knowing Ronda Rousey, it, it, this rivalry, far from done. Far from done. But then we move on to the main event. Originally, we were supposed to have had the New Day's Kofi, uh, Kofi Kingston and King Woods uh, versus Sheamus and Ridge Holland. But I'm assuming we might get that match tomorrow night. I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure. But the main event was the Kevin Owens show with special guests. The return of the Hall of Famer Stone Cold Steve Austin in his home state of Texas. And Kevin Owens, as always, started talking shit. Started talking shit about Austin and the great state of Texas. All that. Kevin Owens is one dumb son of a bitch. I'm just going to be real. He is one dumb son of a bitch to talk shit about Stone Cold. You do that, you, I don't, no. You're fucked. And Kevin Owens said, I want to fight you, no hold barn. We did not think, after 19 years, here's the thing, 19 years ago, WrestleMania 19, Safe, Safeco Field in Seattle, The Rock vs. Stone Cold, Round 3, the last chapter in that saga, and The Rock won. That was Austin's last match ever in WWE. 19 years later, Kevin Owens calls him out. This match went damn near all over AT&T Stadium. Stone Cold Steve Austin, being typical Stone Cold, had a couple of, you know, you know, had a few beers. 
and uh, he he defeated Kevin Owens with a stunner, and the and the Dallas PD big shouts to them no copyrights whatever you guys know how this works with the algorithm took Kevin Owens and escorted his ass out of AT and T Stadium. And as far as the attendance for night one, 77,899. Compared to WrestleMania 32, the attendance was 101,763. Yeah, I have no words for it, but it's interesting because... Tomorrow night, we have an, an an insane card for tomorrow night. We've got Bobby Lashley versus Omos. we got RK Bro, the Street Profits, and the Alpha Academy for the Raw Tag Team titles. we got Sami Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville. Anything goes. Pat McAfee versus Austin Theory. we got the Fatal 4-Way match for the Women's Tag Team titles. Edge versus AJ Styles. And, of course, Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. Winner take all. I can't wait for tomorrow night. I don't know if the New Day versus Rich Holland and Sheamus will be in there. But we will see. But but honestly, it was awesome to get the chance to watch Stone Cold compete at you know you know in a WWE ring. It never got the chance to back in the day. This time I I got the chance to. It was awesome. So that brings me to the question of the day. What are your guys' thoughts on night one of WrestleMania? And who do you think is going to win the main event tomorrow night? Roman Reigns or Brock Lesnar? Let me know in, down in the comments below. And that will do it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button. If you guys are new to the channel and you guys want to see more pay-per-view results in the future, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you guys do not miss out on any new content that comes your way. And be sure to follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. All the links will be in the description below. And if you guys and if you guys have any fan mail that you guys want to send me and you guys want me to open it up on the channel, all the info will be in the description as well. And on that, this is your boy Nash signing out.